In this video, I will give you a brief introduction to the money market. As we know, money market is a market for short-term funds and it is a market from where the agents, economic agents like government and other banking and non-banking institutions find their money for short-term operations. So it's a market which has been specifically designed for meeting the short-term money requirements of various entities. And this is the market, the maturity period of the fund does not cross one year. So therefore, the maximum maturity period of the asset transaction in this market extends only up to one year. And let us see what is meant by the money market. So a money market is a market for short-term debt instruments, maturity below one year. It is a highly liquid market wherein securities are bought and sold in large denominations to reduce transaction cost. So although transactions take place only for a short period of time, they in size they are high denomination transactions. Usually banks engage in transactions in money market and other financial agencies are also engaged in transactions in money market. Government also come to the money market to find to, to collect money for their short term operations. So they come in uh, means they come into the money market for collecting a huge amount of money, although for a very short period of time. So that is why it is said that this is a market where funds or securities are bought and sold in large denominations and especially to reduce the transaction cost. What are the uh, instruments uh, or segments of the money market? Cold money market, certificate of deposits, market for commercial paper, market for treasury bills or treasury bills. Uh, these are the major instruments or segments of the money market. So cold money market is that money market where cold money is transacted and certificate of deposits is that part of the money market where transactions take place in certificate of deposit, commercial paper also treasury bills are, uh, are transacted in treasury bill market. So these are the major instruments or in other words they could be called the segments of the money market. Now let me explain the characteristics of the money market. Uh, we simply point out uh, uh, three important characteristics. Uh, I hope that these are these have already been known to you. Uh, the first important characteristic is it's not a single market but it's a collection of the market for several instruments. You can hardly regard money market as a single market. Rather, it is a collection of different market like coin money market, treasury bill market, market for certificate of deposits, market for commercial paper like that. So it is a collection of different markets, several markets dealing in different type of instruments. It is a wholesale market for short term debt instruments. Uh, it is a wholesale market uh, for short term debt instruments. That is the second important characteristic. Third one, its principal feature is owner where the credit worthiness of the participant is important. So here the credit worthiness of the participant is very important. Uh, the, the institutions dealing in money market are very reputed institutions. They are very much honored uh, in the financial system. So therefore, uh, the principal uh, feature of the institutions engaging in money market operation is that their credit worthiness uh, that means they are credit worthy institutions. Who are the main players in the money market? Reserve Bank of India of course is the first player. Then comes the discount and finance house of India, DFHI, mutual fund, insurance companies, banks, corporate investors, non-banking financial companies, state governments, provident funds, primary dealers, securities trading corporation of India, public sector undertakings, non-resident Indians. So all these agents can participate in the money market. So we have listed some of the names only, but there are I mean, uh, many agents who can participate in the money market. It's a need based market. That's very important. Need based market wherein demand and supply of money shape the market. So the main forces in money market are demand and supply. So it's a need based market. Some people have excess money and there are some people or some institutions have deficit or shortage of fund. 
So therefore, these two uh, forces come into the money market. Those uh, having more money with them and those experiencing shortage of money. So these forces come to the money market to transaction to, or to do the business. So therefore, it is completely a need-based market. Transactions in money market can be both secured and unsecured without collateral. Sometimes transactions take place with collateral. Sometimes trans transactions take place without any collateral. So therefore, two way you can take you can have transactions in the money market with the help of the collateral or without the help of the collateral. That is why it is said uh, the credit worthiness is very important. Honesty is very important. So even if you can have money without any collateral being supplied to the other party, it does mean that you are expected to have some sort of credit worthiness or owner owner or you must be a trustworthy person or any I mean, institutions, then only you can engage in the money market operations. Let us look at the functions of the money market. To serve as an equilibrating force that redistributes cash balances in accordance with the liquidity needs of the participants. So it is an equilibrating force. So that means demand and supply, when demand and supply play an important role in money market, or when money market becomes a market based on the need of the people, uh, means being driven by the demand and supply forces. Naturally, the equilibrating force, it will act as an equilibrating force. So money market acts as an equilibrating force and it redistributes cash balances in such a way that demand is, becomes equal to its supply. To form a basis for the management of liquidity and money in the economy by monetary authorities. So it's a, a, a it's a market which ensures liquidity in the economy, uh, and that's very important uh, because uh, the, the in the in the monetary system money market becomes very important because it is the market through which mainly the liquidity set up in the economy is sustained, and thirdly to provide reasonable access to the users of short term money for meeting their requirements at realistic prices means uh, when a bank fi finds in finds itself in difficulty then it can have money from other banks for one or two days. So that is made possible through the money market. So th that means the uh, it, it provides re reasonable money, reasonable quantity of money at reasonable prices or interest rate to the participants. So that's an important function of the money market. Now you can list out uh, means uh, uh, further uh, more functions like the provide balancing mechanism to even out the demand and supply of short term funds or in other words it is an equilibrating force then it provides a focal point for central bank intervention for influence in liquidity and general level of interest rate in the economy. So it is a market which ensures liquidity in the economy and it, it is a market which signals the, the, the general level of interest rate. So the interest rate that the money market projects will always become a benchmark for other interest rate in our economy. So therefore, in that sense, you can say that money market is acting as a stabilizing force on one side and it is ensuring liquidity and it is providing signal as to how the interest rate in the economy should go or should be gathered. To provide reasonable access to suppliers and users of short term funds to fulfill their borrowing and investment requirements at an efficient market clearing price. This we have already pointed out and plays it plays a central role in the monetary policy transmission mechanism as through it uh, the operations of monetary policy are transmitted to financial market and ultimately to the real economy. So it is a it is an important role to play in the monetary policy transmission mechanism of our country. Uh, for example, uh, take the case of the uh, of a decline in interest rate affected by the central bank. So when the central bank reduces the policy rate of interest or in other words you can say the repo rate the central bank thinks that the rate of interest in the economy will be down after some time and that will induce investment and thereby creating more employment and income opportunities in the economy. So this could be made possible only if the money, money market first responds to that. So if rate of interest is lowered by the central bank, Reserve Bank of India or even the policy rate of interest is lowered by the Reserve Bank of India, monetary policy instruments should react to that by lowering by by having a low interest rate then only the monetary policy transmission mechanism will turn out to be a success so that's why it is said the money market plays an important role 
a central role in monetary policy transmission mechanism of our economy through which monetary variables will have influences on real economic variables. Besides the above functions, a vital function in money market facilities, the development of a market for long term securities. Of course, the long term security market will also be based on the, 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 the facilities being provided by the money market. The interest rate for extremely short term use of money serves a benchmark for long term financial instruments. So, even the long term financial instruments, interest rate of long term financial instruments may be based on the interest rate of the short term instruments traded in the money market. So, in that way also money market helps the economy because by, by giving a signal as to how the interest rate be changed and that signal will be provided to the long term or money market or so to, to the capital market by the money market. Money market rates reflect market expectations of how the policy rate could evolve in the future short term uh, period. What are the benefits of an efficient money market? If your money market is very efficient, it will give a lot of benefits to the economy. What are the benefits? It allows banks to manage risk arising from interest rate fluctuations. That is the first and foremost important point because banks will be able to manage the risk. Second, it provides a stable source of fund to banks in addition to deposits. So, of course, deposits are very important for the banks to function, but banks cannot only depend on deposits to manage its business. So, it will have to find out some other sources of fund and that means that source is money market operations. An efficient money market encourages the development of non-banking intermediaries, thus increasing competition for funds. So, non-banking financial intermediaries, the efficiency of non-banking financial intermediaries largely depends upon the efficiency of the money market. A liquid money market provides an effective source of long-term finance to borrowers. So, it's a source of liquid means long-term finance and a liquid and vibrant money market is necessary for the development of a capital market, foreign exchange market and market in derivative instruments, trading in forward, swap and future and that is also supported by a liquid money market as the certainty of prompt cash settlement is essential for such transactions. So, we will uh, in detail explain swap, forward and the future. So, for the time being just understand that trading in forward, swap and futures that becomes very easy with the help of a strong competitive money market. This is the structure of the money market in our country. Uh, the, the, the following chart shows the structure of the money market, how is it organized. So, with, we, uh, with this we finish this uh, session. So, we have explained the meaning of money market, function and who are the main players in the money market, what are the characteristics of the money market and what role money market plays in an economy. So, these things we have already explained. Thank you and tomorrow or in the next video we will be discussing major instruments of the money market or major segments or sub markets of the money market. So, that we will be discussing in the next class. Uh, okay.